Welcome back, everybody. Moving on to step three for finding that weighted average cost of capital, we're now going to be finding the cost of preferred equity. Now, before watching step three, if you haven't watched steps one and two and the overview video on the weighted average cost of capital, I would highly recommend you do so before watching this one just so you can see from a higher level what we are doing. Now, a couple of unique characteristics about preferred equity. Preferred equity usually pays constant dividends indefinitely, forever. So the dividends aren't changing, usually like in a common stock where they are growing at a certain growth rate. They're just constant. They're just one value. And sometimes questions will straight up give you the dividend amount in dollar terms, but sometimes they'll express it as a percentage. And if they express it as a percentage, usually the par value of preferred equity is based on $100. So let's say a question says that preferred equity is paying a 4% preferred dividend. Then the 4% is going to be based on that par value of $100. So 100 times 0 0.04 gives us a $4 dividend. So that's going to be the constant dividend that's being paid forever. So unless they give you a different par value to work with in the question, you assume the par value of preferred equity is always $100. And that's different than the par value that they give you for bonds. Usually with bonds, we're working with a par value of 1,000. With preferred equity, par value is 100. Now, another thing, unless it's stated otherwise, the dividends are being paid indefinitely. So if they're being paid forever, that means it's just going to be a regular perpetuity. And if you remember, the present value of a perpetuity is just equal to the cash flow over the return or the discount rate. Well, if we show this general present value of perpetuity formula in terms of preferred equity, we can say that the price of preferred equity stock, which we could label as P0, is equal to the dividend that's being paid over the return on preferred or the cost of preferred equity. And let's label that as RP. So let's actually put RP here. So that is a short form for the cost of preferred equity. So if we rearrange this formula, basically the return on the preferred is just equal to the dividend that's always being paid over the price of the stock. And notice how there is no G, no growth rate involved here, because usually preferred equity is paying constant dividends. So we would just have this dividend here and there would be no growth associated with it. So let's say we have 4.5% preferred stock and it's selling for $81.82. What is the return on the preferred stock or the cost of preferred equity? Well, we know cost of preferred equity is basically equal to the dividend over the price because the dividends are being paid forever and they are constant so it's just the present value of a perpetuity but notice in this question they don't give us the dividend straight away they don't give us the dollar amount they do give us the price of $81.82 but what's that dividend figure that we have to input here well they did give us what the percentage of the par value is and that percentage there represents what the dividend is going to be. So we know the dividend on this preferred share is going to be 4.5% in decimals, which is 0 0.045, multiplied by the par value of preferred stock. And as I mentioned, if par value is not given in the question, you assume it's just $100. So 0 0.045 times $100 gives us a dividend of $4.50. So now we could input that here. We got $4.50 as the dividend, and that's going to be over the price, which is given as $81.82. So when you do that calculation, you end up getting 0 0.055 or 5.5%. So that there represents the return on the preferred equity or the cost of preferred equity. So again, sometimes they'll give you the dividend amount straight away. They'll give you the dollar amount. That's really easy. You just plug it in over the price and you get that return on preferred. But sometimes they'll give you the dividends expressed as a percentage. 
and when they're expressed as a percentage, you have to multiply that percentage by the par value of 100, and then you get that dividend, then plug it into the equation, and you get that return on preferred. But either way, pretty simple. Return on preferred is the easiest to calculate of all of the different forms of capital, as I mentioned before. So let's do a little summary of the process that we have covered so far, the steps that we have covered so far in finding the weighted average cost of capital. So we mentioned that there are three sources of capital that we can take on when we are starting a company. We could take on some debt, take on some equity, take on some preferred. We can buy the assets and then hopefully the assets are making us income and then our company starts growing. Well, we're going to have to pay a certain return to all these three sources of capital. So we're going to have to pay a return to the debt holders or the bondholders. We called that cost of debt. So we covered that in step one. Then to the equity holders, we're going to have to pay them a cost of equity. Covered that in step two. And then in this video, we covered step three, which was paying a return to the preferred shareholders which is cost of preferred equity, I should say equity here. And that was step three. And now if you remember to the overview video for the weighted average cost of capital, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a single measure for the cost of our capital. So we're trying to somehow average these out. So how do you suppose we go about that? Well, would we take just the arithmetic average? Would we take the cost of debt, take the cost of equity, take the cost of preferred equity, add them all together, divide it by three? Well, we can, but the problem with that approach is what if we are taking a lot more debt than we are equity? Or vice versa, what if we're taking a lot more equity than we are debt or preferred? If we take the costs and just divide them by three, then we're equally weighting all of the costs and that wouldn't be really representative of the capital that we are receiving because we're receiving more equity so the cost of our overall capital is going to be weighted more towards the cost of equity in reality and if we just take a simple arithmetic average of those we're given an equal weight to all three sources of capital so what we have to do is we have to find what the market value of our debt is, market value of our equity, market value of our preferred equity. And then depending on those market values, we're going to take a weighted average of those cost of capitals. And then we get that single cost of capital measure, which ends up being our weighted average cost of capital. So now our next few steps that we're going to go over, step four, we're going to find the market value of debt. Step five, market value of equity. And then step six is going to be finding the market value of the preferred equity. Yo, what's up, guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully, you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also, check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.